Hi everyone, uh, my name is Joel Denning and I'm going to be presenting at the uh, design review meeting on Monday and wanted to give a quick preview of some of the stuff we're talking about. The purpose of this is to try to demystify the word micro front end and micro front end architecture, what we're talking about with that. So this will show you what we mean. Um, what you're looking at right now on the screen is this is actually uh, one of the apps that I built with a micro front end architecture, myself and the whole team. And um, so I'm going to click on this thing here. This is actually just uh, a thing that we built for developers, so it's internal only. But you'll notice it has a list of all of the micro front ends that exist. There's a dashboard one, a billing one, a calendar one. Um, and you'll see there's one that was like for auth. There's one that is for uh, fetching data from the, from the back end. And then there are some that are more UI based, uh, like uh, the login UI or the nav bar, stuff like that. Uh, we don't need to worry about this part for now. But what I did want to show you is, uh, if you click here, you get this toggle app overlays thing. What this does is you'll see there's now words on top of, um, yeah, there's now words on top of all of this. And uh, this is the name of the micro front end. And then in parentheses, it is the team that owns it. And you know, this was in a, this was in a company with teams that were named with colors. Uh, for OpenMRS's purposes, this could be like a different distribution uh, that has authored a micro front end, or it could be a core micro front end uh, that has been authored. And you'll see that we have two active at the same time right now. Um, and as we navigate around, so if I go to contacts, the dashboard UI disappeared and was replaced by a contacts UI uh, application, but the nav bar stayed. Um, and so the reason that that happened is that uh, here in the URL bar, this URL controls which front ends, which micro front ends are active at any point in time. And so uh, we were, uh, you know, on this dashboard thing because it started with slash home. We moved to contacts. Now we're, it's with the slash clients. Now the contacts is active. And you'll see if we go to billing, now billing is active. Um, engagements, now engagements is active. Tasks, now tasks is active. Um, you'll see here, the, so this, where it's like sort of looking funky here, um, that's actually just a bug in the overlay. They're not all active at the same point in time. It's just a bug in how it's like displaying them. Uh, but yeah, we'll go to got transcripts, all that. Now you'll see you can have more than two active at a time if you want. So I'm going to go into one of the more complicated parts of the app. Um, oh, I'll have to, I'll have to create a client first. Hold on one moment. Uh, that should be enough. Okay. So here, okay. Now we are in so look, we've got the nav bar, a contact menu, and then some workflow, a workflow UI application. This one here doesn't have the overlay. It actually is a whole another one. So there are four. This one is contacts UI, contact menu is this one, primary nav bar at the top, workflow UI. So we've got four at once. And uh, so this is possible. Uh, it's nicer when you can have just maybe one or two active but it is, this is just showing it is possible and you can sort of split up the screen into which part is owned, but which, which uh, application. Um, if we go into engagements, we'll see another, um, we'll see another like more complicated situation. So here, uh, let's do um, maybe forms here. Okay. So we've got four applications active right now, all coordinating. Uh, they share data when they need to. They're independent when they need to be independent. Um, yeah. And so, okay, one, one last thing just to show here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about to try to explain what's going on here, but I did want to show you 
just one uh, one part of how this is working under the hood. Okay, so what I've gone to here, this is a JSON file that actually keeps track of all of the micro front ends and the current URL to download them from. Um, and so you can see there's a whole bunch here. Uh, this is called an import map, this JSON file. And this particular import map is using an older version. If you go look up import maps, they won't have these Sophie and manifest things at the top. Instead, it will just have imports. But the idea is exactly the same. Um, meaning this is an import map. You give it a name of your module, and then you give it a URL, and then uh, do that over and over and over again. You get to pick and choose which ones do you include in your distribution, which ones uh, control which routes, um, which ones are owned by OpenMRS core type of stuff, or which ones are authored by third parties, is ultimately it comes down to this import map. So this will be an important uh, like feature of the architecture that we're going for, uh, where uh, you'll be able to add your own stuff to this import map and pick and choose which of these modules you will use. Um, so anyway, that's all. That's the preview. Um, I will be speaking more about this on Monday morning, well, morning my time. Uh, and uh, yeah. Please join if you are interested in learning more about this. Thanks.